at this place in history. We're in Waterbury on the grounds of the former Vermont State Hospital with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, what brings us here this week? So Mike, the Vermont Historical Society has recently published a book called Vermont for the Vermonters, which takes a, a, a very in-depth, uh, but also holistic look at the eugenics movement in Vermont. Eugenics is the pseudoscientific field of better human breeding. And it was a field that was started in Great Britain in 1883. Galton, who was the founder of eugenics. Francis Galton, right. Francis Galton. He's the half cousin of Charles Darwin, yes. so he gets a lot of inspiration from him. It was adopted by the majority of American states. Leading to a great deal of devastation in a lot of people's lives through forced sterilizations and other things. In Vermont, we see sterilization under the 1931 law, which mandated theoretically it would be voluntary sterilization. There's a lot of issues with that idea of consent, mostly because you are targeting both children and then also people who are considered mentally disabled. So there is this question of, are you actually able to give consent? And we do have records that suggest in many of these cases that it was coercive. We also see segregation to separate out populations that were considered undesirable so that they could not procreate. So we're sitting right now at the Waterbury Hospital, which we know from several superintendents records that they intended certain people would be kept here for lifelong commitments so that they would be prevented from procreation. Steve Perkins and I have touched upon poor farms. What that actually meant in many cases was people that were unwanted by society. The elderly, dependent children, people with mental disabilities, with physical disabilities, and those struggling with health problems. It becomes part of the eugenics movement as so many of these people are moved from the poor farms into state institutions. The Waterbury State Hospital and its officials were some of the biggest supporters of eugenics. And unfortunately, they, that support grew out of how many people that they were housing here. And due to their own pre-existing biases, they believed that the majority of cases were due to poor heredity. So they really lacked an understanding at the time of the various environmental factors that could play a role in health issues. And we also see people who were sent here that were not mentally ill. So, but beyond that, because they were seeing such large numbers of people, Vermonters come here, they began to believe that eugenics was the solution. And we see that support strongly emerge in as early as 1912 and continue into the Eugenics Survey of Vermont, where the superintendent here, uh, Dr. Stanley, was actually on the advisory committee of the Eugenics Survey and turned over records from the people institutionalized here. After World War II, eugenics has become associated with the horrors of Nazi Germany. Eugenicists are pretty upset about that in America. So what they do instead is that they rebrand it. And this is systematic. Even though eugenical policies and programs remain in place, Vermont's 1931 sterilization law actually wasn't overturned until the 1970s. And there is a sterilization law that replaced it, though with non-eugenical language. What was really interesting to me as I carried out my research was how it emerged out of a public welfare and health crisis in the late 1800s. A sobering reminder to us how as we let crises develop and also unfortunately as solutions may fail, how people can turn to extreme answers. The book will be available at the Vermont Historical Society and select indie bookstores across the state. A difficult story that needs to be told at this place in history.